can we develop a thicker skin in dating? Is it possible to develop a thicker skin? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you so much for joining us again on Second Act TV. Welcoming back Sandy Weiner, the dating coach, founder of Last First Date, communications expert, <laughs> and the author of Choice Points in Dating. Sandy, as always, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Soka. Sandy, today is an interesting and important topic. Can we develop a thicker skin in dating? I mean, this is something that obviously comes across in the comments all the time. People give up. They're just, you know what? I'm done. It's not going to work. I'm, I'm tired of, of the, you know, just being rejected, et cetera, et cetera. And then you wrote an article about developing thicker skin. I said, what, what, what a great topic. Is it possible to develop a thicker skin? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. I think that a lot of people think you're either born with a thicker skin or you don't take things personally or you do. And I'm here to tell you I'm living proof that you can develop a thicker skin. You can stop taking things so personally and you can have a much better life. It's not just about your dating life, but your life in general gets better when you don't just absorb everything everybody says or does. Well, and as you read this, and as I read it at first, it's like, yeah, it's, it's just so much easier said than done. But then the more I thought about it, especially after your last point, but we'll get to that, is, yeah, you know, my, my uh, skin has gotten a lot thicker <laughs> over these years. So, so let's see what, uh, what kind of advice we can give to people that, yeah, you know, I need to develop a thicker skin. Uh, your first point is here, separate fact from story that when something hurts us or some uh, somebody does something to hurt us, it's usually not about us. What, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so we make up stories and mm -hmm. we fill in the blanks. And so somebody does something and we have no idea why they did it, mm -hmm. what they, you know, what was the meaning behind it, but we're meaning making machines and we like to make up stories to make it fit our narrative. And so I am inviting our audience to stop doing that <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because we don't know why somebody goes to us. Like mm -hmm. it could have been that they are terrible at communication. Why mm -hmm. did they so-called reject us? And we'll talk about that in a minute, what rejection really is. We don't know. There are tons of reasons why people do what they do. So to stop separating to stop feeling that self-doubt and to stop taking everything personally instead of asking why somebody did what they did that hurt you ask yourself a higher level question which is why would I want to date somebody mm -hmm. who would just disappear without telling me why or who would just stop talking to me on the dating app or not ask me out again without telling me that they had a good time, but I just wasn't their type or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But don't don't fill in the blanks. That makes so much sense, really, when you think about it, that because it happened to us and we're, you know, by nature, we're, we're self-focused, that something has to be wrong with us, with whatever happened. It doesn't necessarily make the situation much easier, but maybe easier to absorb. And as you said, the self-doubt just, you know, eats at you. And that certainly is, is, is true in the dating scene. So, yeah, separate fact from story. You just mentioned rejection, that number two here. Rejection is not personal if they don't know you. Yep. <laughs> I think we immediately go to, what's wrong with me? What did I do wrong? Why didn't they like me? And there are so many ways to look at what we call rejection that mm -hmm. really have nothing to do with us or ways that can help us develop a thicker skin. And because if somebody doesn't know you, like mm -hmm. let's say you're just talking on a dating app and mm -hmm. all of a sudden they stop talking to you or mm -hmm. you never get past a really two word conversations, mm -hmm. they're not rejecting you. If they never met you, they can't reject you because they don't know you. 
you only can reject somebody once you really know them. It's like trolls who write on people's YouTube videos like oh, this yeah. one. Like if you have <laughs> a troll and he's saying that he or she or it is saying something that's really negative about mm -hmm. you or your mm -hmm. channel and they don't know you and mm -hmm. they're saying mean things. This isn't personal. I mean, it could still sting a little bit, but remember that they don't know you well enough to make, to have an informed opinion. Mm -hmm. The second tip is to find contrary evidence about, about why these things happen. And what I mean by that is look for other reasons why something happened. Mm -hmm. So they stop talking to you. Maybe they're talking to other people. Maybe they're terrible communicators. Maybe they have a fear of intimacy. We don't know and who cares and just move on. <laughs> don't yeah. sit and overanalyze it because it'll make you crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and it's funny that you say that because what came up for me, and I wanted to share that because I'm sure it's coming up for people in our audience is that, okay, you know, theoretically, that makes a lot of sense that if they don't know me, they can't reject me. But if that, but say we've been talking, you know, why did they stop? Did I do something? <laughs> I mean, you can't help having that come up. But to me, what this is what I want to ask you, where's that fine line between, you know, what are you putting out? We have tons of videos on that. You know, is something you either presented or, or the way you handle the situation or what's in your profile, is that turning people off? Do, do you see what I'm saying? Where's yes. the fine line there? That's a good, good question. And it's a good point to bring up. So it's not always somebody else's problem. If you mm -hmm. constantly have the same issue over and over, mm -hmm. first of all, if somebody is engaging and talking to you online, then they were interested on some level to mm -hmm. get there. So it's probably not your pictures or your profile. It's probably your messaging. If you consistently have this happen or you're engaging with the wrong people, like people who have a beautiful photo and don't really say anything. And there's really nobody behind this photo. So I would do some self-reflection, not for self-blame, but like, let's see, is, are there some patterns here that I keep repeating? And if there are, then make those changes. And one of the problems I see sometimes are people share too much too soon. Uh, they'll share things they think somebody else needs to hear. We've done videos on that right. don't share too much too soon. It's, it's overwhelming or mm -hmm. somebody shares about the looks of the other person. It's, if you're looking for a long-term relationship, don't start with the physical, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a man or a woman, I always look to see, is there something I can do differently, but not, not in the way that's like, I'm a bad person or right. I'm deeply flawed. I yes. think that's the fine line we have to look at. Like, mm -hmm. don't just focus on there's something really wrong with me. Yeah, I think that's the key, the key point that you just said is the pattern. If it happens once, don't, you know, okay, move on. If it keeps happening or the same thing, that makes so much sense. So thank you for, for the added uh, clarification there. I think that's important. I really think that that's important to hear uh, for people who are certainly, uh, they're experiencing this. Number three here, remember your worth. Another thing that's so easily said, but what does that really mean? And how do you do it? You know, as you write here, while you can't control the behavior of others, you can't control how you respond if you have that self-confidence. Again, hard one to do, isn't it? It's a practice. All of this is a practice. Like when I first started dating after my divorce, I, I, my self-worth was not very high. I, I put people on a pedestal all the time. I took everything personally. So I, I'm talking from experience that when you have been out there dating for a while and you realize the value that you have, then you're not going to tolerate somebody's bad behavior. You're going to move on more quickly. Mm -hmm. And so there are a few things you can do if you feel like you've been rejected a lot or ghosted or taking it so hard and taking things so personally. And the first thing is to not just jump in and trust people right away. Mm -hmm. I see so many people feeling like their self-worth is dependent on somebody's opinion of them. And they get so excited, and I've done this too, where you're like, oh my God, I finally have a connection with somebody and I just want to jump right in and build a future with this person, but you don't know them yet. So take your time and don't, don't just jump right in. 
The next one is that if you tend to get physical very early on and get sexual early on, um, and that attaches you to that person, which is very common, then wait until you see consistent interest from the person that you're dating, because it's so easy to just jump right in with the sex. And you can't really think rationally once you've bonded sexually, your, your hormones mm -hmm. take over. So this is why people ignore red flags. Then they feel devastated when somebody doesn't want to see them anymore. Mm -hmm. But what if you keep in the power position mm -hmm. and you're the one who says, okay, you know, I know that when I have sex early on, it doesn't work out well for me. So I'd rather just mm -hmm. build this slowly. How do you feel yeah. about that? Yeah. The, you know, I had a really interesting conversation uh, with Dr. Gary Salyer on that. He, uh, he actually quoted a statistic, a study, I'll, I'll try to find it, I'll certainly link to the video, where if you don't have sex for 30 days, like after 30, like this was a really scientific study with a lot of people, <laughs> but those who waited 31 days or more, the relationship was going to work out like 50% more. So, I mean, some huge difference. And I, I thought that was really interesting because it, like you said, early on, boy, it's not about if, if it's right or wrong more, you know, that's, we're not saying that, you know, you're old enough to make your own uh, judgment there, but there's something about your decision-making during that time that will affect if, if the relationship is going to work out or not. Yeah. I mean, I have a client right now who's doing that. She, I had just done this video on slow dating and she is practicing slow dating. Mm -hmm. She met a guy, a lot of green flags, but there were some yellow flags, maybe red flags mm -hmm. that she mm -hmm. got curious about, had very deep discussions with him about everything, mm -hmm. told him how she wants to pace the physical part of the relationship. Mm -hmm. He was totally on board. They are building slowly and steadily. They are completely falling in love with each other oh. and they still haven't had sex. And, mm -hmm. you know, they've slept in the same bed, but they haven't mm -hmm. had sex yet. Mm -hmm. And it's working so well for her. This is the deepest relationship she's ever had. It's mm -hmm. the most emotionally mature relationship mm -hmm. she's ever had. Look, there's no guarantees, but she knows what she wants and mm -hmm. because of the work we've done together she's able to then express it and see what his responses are that's going to mm -hmm. tell you so much i totally agree i totally agree number four here you could do a whole segment on this discover the deeper reason why it hurts so much you know that i mean that goes back to your attachment style what happens what wounds are we bringing from the past yeah it always comes back to that. And if we don't do the work, then we're going to keep being super sensitive about certain things from our past. Mm -hmm. Like there's a woman who um, just hired me for a session. She is widowed and she started to date somebody new and all these emotions are coming up and turns out it's abandonment issues mm -hmm. because her husband died. Mm -hmm. So she's afraid she's going to lose this person. It's not rational. So it doesn't have to even go back to childhood. Maybe she had abandonment issues in her childhood also. Mm -hmm. But criticism is a big one. You know, if you were criticized as a child or if mm -hmm. you, then you're going to be super sensitive to criticism. Mm -hmm. All of these things show up later in life if we don't deal with the original childhood wound. Yeah. Well, and at this age too, you know, 50, 60s, uh, you know, we're, we've lived a long time and we've had a lot of time to amass other wounds, as you said, you know, the, the husband dying, but I think infidelity is a huge one. I know it was, you know, for me it, is that triggers, it's so difficult to trust again. And if you bring that into a new relationship, you're almost guaranteed, guaranteed sure. sabotage. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah good thing. Like I said, we can do a whole, whole segment on this, uh, but I definitely wanted to bring that up uh, because yeah, like you said, this could be, this could be the bottom uh, or at the bottom of, of, of everything. Now I like your uh, point five, And at first I thought, well, how do you do this? But remember a time when you had a thicker skin, when you weren't taking things so personally. And at first I thought, well, what would that be? And then the more I thought, okay, I, I can do that and that makes sense. Yeah, a lot of times when we're trying to overcome something hard, we remember a time when we were victorious. We remember mm -hmm. a time that we overcame adversity. 
remember mm -hmm. a time when we stood up to somebody. Mm -hmm. Those are all times when we had a thicker skin. Yeah. Uh, I personally have kept little notes that people have sent me to remind mm -hmm. myself of positive things because it's so easy to take that one negative thing and make it be the whole yeah. way that we look at ourselves. And we are loved. We are loved by people who matter, you know, and Brene Brown talks about don't listen to people who are not in their arena. These are people who, right, who aren't here with you. Like they're, they're, it's very easy to look out from the outside and say, mm -hmm. you know, you're a jerk. It's, it, it's another thing to have the people who love you most and who understand you and know you and tell you how awesome you are. That so resonated with me because I just, as you know, I'm, I'm closing down a house, moving, I'm, I'm throwing out a bunch of stuff, which actually felt really great. But I came across some boxes with cards I've kept forever or photos I've kept forever. And I said, well, what do I need this for? And I started going through, it's like, oh. <laughs> and, and then I read this, it's like, yes, this makes so much sense. Do keep that. It, it, it's, it's, it's not junk. It's may come in handy one of these days. Well, you know, again, developing a thicker skin, my goodness, we, we can talk about this. As you said, it's a practice. What, what else can we share? What else can you share, Sandy, uh, before we wrap up here? The more you practice anything, the better you get at it. And so mm -hmm. just keep working on letting things roll off, like not not dwelling on it so much. I used to ruminate about everything people said about me and I should have said something different. Take all the shoulds out of your vocabulary mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and just realize, okay, hopefully I'm learning and growing and I'm gonna practice shortening the span of time it takes for me to recover because that's really what happens. It gets smaller and smaller until you, you're just mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, no big deal, yeah. moving on. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll get lots of comments on this. I'm, uh, this is a very resonating topic to, I know a lot of people, no matter where you are in, in the dating process or relationship process, and like you said, anywhere in life. So as usual, Sandy, thank you so much for your time. I will link to all of your information to your website, Last First Date, and of course your book, Choice Points in Dating great, great information in there. It's a template for a lot of what we talk about. So, so do check it out. And Sandy, I look forward to our next conversation on Second Act TV. Mm -hmm.